This is the story of our trip up the Nile. The trip was seven days, beginning in Luxor, then traveling upriver to Esna, Edfu, Komombo, Aswan, and finally to the monuments of Abu Simbel on the southern border of both ancient and modern Egypt.
third came to the throne after he married the daughter of Hatshepsut. But Tutmosis III at that time was a young boy, and his, uh, 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 his stepmother Hatshepsut was so strong lady, so she ruled with him in a kind of corrigency. But this corrigency did not last longer, just for a few years. In these few years, she controlled everything in her hands, she put him aside, and she ruled alone for 20 years. So all figures of Hatshepsut here represent her as a man with a false beard. Uh, uh, that was the main reason for the family feud between Hatshepsut and Tetmos the third. He hated her so much because she was the throne from him. That's why after she died, he came back to the throne and he started to get revenge of her by damaging her figures, her leaves, chiseling out her names, hammering her figures in the walls of this temple. So the uh, figures of Hatshepsut here were very much destroyed. Uh, Hatshepsut ordered to build her temple here uh, on the same design of an earlier temple which located to the left of the That one to the left there was built by Muntahatub Nebhebetra, the founder of the Middle Kingdom. So it's about 450 years between that temple and that one. So that one was built around 1500 before Christ, 1490 roughly. Chipsut did not care about the military campaigns during her lifetime. She made some commercial expeditions to the countries in the neighborhood, and one of these successful expeditions, the one to Pont. Pont, where is Pont now? Pont is the country of Somalia now, which located somewhere on the Red Sea. Uh, she brought from that country um, uh, a lot of trees, incense, gum, and myrrh trees to beautify the entrance of her temple here. The old gun, except a few of them, you can see by the entrance here on both sides. Uh,
that garden here, they added to the temple. They built some smaller temples or chapels for the god Amun until it became a complex. It's not a single temple, it's a complex. You can see here uh, what we call the, the harbor of the temple. Because from here to the night, when I was somewhere here, was a water canal. Right. And the original plan of the temple, the original design was a water canal. So this one is called the harbor. And then you can see an avenue of spaces here with ram heads representing Amun himself because uh, one of the forms of Amun has a ram. That's why you can see ram headed spaces here. That's why he is writing the name of Siti the First on one of the leaves of the tree. You can see the little cartouche is writing. He's writing the name of Siti the First on one of the leaves of this family tree. Then you can see the goddess Sehmet, a lioness headed goddess, the war goddess. Slinkiest hips in Greek and Egyptian mythology, I have to say. He is blessing the king again who is kneeling in front of Rahorakti. In his hand, like toys, and he is showing his power and strength to the god Amun in front of him. He is smiting them in front of Amun, as you see. And they have eastern faces, a Syrian faces.
see two Nile gods. The Nile god of the north and the Nile god of the south. You can see two different flowers. The Papyrus of the north, the lotus in the south of the south. Here is the river Nile. The two Nile gods are tying the stems of Papyrus and lotus together as a symbol of unification between north and south. King Ramsay II is sitting on, the, on this throne. This is part of the throne. Uh, and you can see at the bottom here the image of the king being tied from behind on a single rope, tied on their necks. That means the great King Ramsay II managed to keep or maintain the unification of north and south under his strong rule and he controlled his enemies. Courtyard of Ramesses II. This temple has two open courtyards. One for Ramesses II, one made by Amun Hatta the Third. Festival, the one I talk about yes. was the main one on Luxor here and used to be celebrated between Karnak and Luxor. From Karnak to the Nile to Luxor Temple, uh, the sacred boats of the three gods Amun, Mut, and Pansu used to be taken out of their shrines at Karnak, carried on the shoulders of the priests until the harbor, and then sailed through the water canal to the Nile and then south to Luxor Temple. After some uh, festivals and celebrations for some days here in Luxor Temple, used to be brought back to Karnak, carried on the shoulders of the priests through the Avenue of Sphinxes. On this wall here, it's showing the celebration from Karnak to Luxor. So you can see here the sacred boats. The reliefs are much damaged, but you can recognize them. This is one boat. This is another one. This is the third one. They are at Karnak, are put on sledges, on altars. After that, they were carried from their shrines at Karnak Temple to the Nile. So here is another point. The rope here. This is the end of the rope. All right.
Richard I, he ordered to build this chapel for the God Town. So the original one, the original chapel, uh, was supported by four big pillars. The roof was supported by four, four big pillars. He took everything out of and he built this chapel instead of the original one. The original one was built by Alan Hunt of the Third, and this one was built by Alexander the Great. A thousand years between the two. Exactly. So the outer walls, the walls surrounding this chapel, have the names of Alan Hunt of the Third. And this chapel, inside and outside, having the names of Alexander the Great. Fertility. Amen. Amen. Amen.